On October 2nd, 1925, in the small town of Parkersburg, West Virginia, a child by the name of Paul Goldsmith was born. He was son to a riverboat captain, but by the time Paul was in his teens, his father had passed. His mother remarried and swiftly moved to St. Clair Shores, Michigan. It was around this time that Paul would graduate and begin working in the burgeoning car culture being built in Detroit. Paul also discovered a passion that would fuel his career during this time, motorcycle racing. Paul would casually involve himself with motorcycles whilst also working for some of the biggest car manufacturers for the time. Over World War II, Goldsmith would make a surmountable amount of money, giving him the ability in 1946 to start his motorcycle racing career. Paul worked hard setting himself up for opportunities. He began to be in contact with the Davidson family, owners of the Harley Davidson Motor Company, and through the fortune he made in the auto industry and the connections he met, Paul took his hobby into a career. By the late 40s and early 50s, Paul would become one of, if not the best motorcycle racer in America. He would win eight championships and claim victories at famous places all across America, a series we now know as the American Flat Track Division. Perhaps his most noteworthy was his victory in the 1953 Daytona 200, the motorcycle version of the Daytona Beach and Road Course race ran for stock cars. Goldsmith would also go on to win at Langhorne Speedway, the track known for eating heroes. Paul was conquering every aspect of racing, and soon he decided to try another aspect, stock cars. In 1953, Paul made his first start at the Michigan State Fairgrounds, and after 250 miles, he won the race. After conquering everything in motorcycle racing, Paul was pressured by his various connections after his success to move from motorcycles to stock cars. His reputation easily helped him find rides, as in 1954 he ran some AAA stock car races, but quickly realized that AAA's version of stock car racing was nothing compared to what was building in the South. Paul continued wrapping up his motorcycle career before he got contacted by a local man in Daytona by the name of Smokey Eunuch. Smokey also had connections with men in Detroit, and the two were connected in hopes to try and create a super team for stock car racing. On March 25th, 1956, the pair took to the track for the first time at Lakewood Speedway. Buck Baker would go on the win whilst Paul in the three car was reported to have crashed out on lap 36. The pair then went to Martinsville, where Goldsmith got fourth, losing to Buck Baker, Speedy Thompson, and Lee Petty. Over 1956 in general, Paul would run in various historic moments. Over the last few years, you probably remember all the mentions of NASCAR racing in Soldier Field. Paul got eighth there. Remember how NASCAR had run one race at Road America over 60 years ago before 2021? Paul got fourth that day, and in 1956, Paul ran his first 500 mile stock car race on record, finishing fifth in the Southern 500. He'd be teammates that race with another legend, Junior Johnson. Later in September of 1956, Paul would head to a track that claimed over 20 men in its existence, the track he also conquered in Langhorne. He would duplicate what he did on a motorcycle and claim his first Cup Series victory, leading 182 laps of 300 and winning by seven laps. Whilst Paul seemed to be great at the complete circular racetrack, it was due to his experiences he had there on surviving on the motorcycle. And Paul was also known to hate the track, quoted as saying, It was a terrible track. It was mainly about the kind of surface it was. Some of it was deep, some of it shallow. The track was dirt, and since it was a perpetual turn, the non-stop throttle time destroyed the surface in ways never imagined. Part of the track was called Puke Hollow, due to the track notably tearing up so much that there was drivers getting nauseous over that section. Whilst the track was extremely dangerous, it did put on great racing. Paul and Fireball Roberts dueled for a large section of this race, before Fireball broke down, leading to Paul becoming the first man to win at the track on a motorcycle and stock car. In 1957, Smokey and Paul ran more races. They swapped the Ford and won at Greensboro, Lancaster, and Rally. Paul also drove a race for Pete DiPaolo and won at Richmond. And as they approached the 1957 Southern 500, they became favorites to win the event. It would turn out, however, to be one of the worst moments for the partnership. Early on in the race, Paul would be involved in a serious crash along with Fonny Flock and Bobby Myers. Paul was seriously hurt, along with Fonny. Bobby was killed. The wreck started when Fonny Flock driving for Herb Thomas spun and stopped on the backstretch. Bobby would slam into him first, with Paul shortly after. Paul would be the only one to ever race again after the accident. He would come back within the same month, hurt, at Langhorne Speedway winning the pole and leading 29 laps before falling out due to an oil line. In 1958, Paul ran the last ever Daytona Beach Road Course race, leading every lap and winning. He became not only the last man to win the beach course, but the only man ever winning on a motorcycle and stock car. It was after that race in 1958 that Paul would step away from NASCAR and run various other stock car divisions. 
but his main focus became what was that year's Indianapolis 500. Smokey and Paul headed to the greatest spectacle in a will to see if they could not only make the race, but win it. Roughly 50 cars entered, but only 33 made the race, as should. With Paul grabbing 16th, everything was seeming promising. It was on the first lap of the race, though, that Paul would be gathered in a 15-car crash. A crash that would see Pat O'Connor and Jerry Unser lose their lives. In the official standings of the race, Paul would be 30th, listed as completing zero laps. He'd finish just ahead of Jerry Unser, and just behind Pat O'Connor. In a span of six months, Paul was gathered in two crashes that led to three fatalities. He didn't run a listed race for the rest of 1958, but Paul did come back. This wasn't the first time he had dealt with adversity. During his motorcycle career, he was involved in a crash that saw him throw himself into a barrier to not run over and kill another fallen driver. Paul, of course, fell off his bike and was subsequently ran over, breaking both of his feet. Paul attempted the 1959 Indianapolis 500, qualifying 16th again and grabbing a 5th place finish. For 1960, Paul started running in the USAC stock car division. And whilst he would finish podium in that year's race, he was apparently in contention to win, but had to make a pit stop to replace an overworn rear tire. In 1961, he ran 14th again in the 500, whilst finishing 18th in a race at Milwaukee. In his USAC stock car career, Paul ran the full season and won 10 times, claiming the 1961 championship. In 1962, Paul duplicated the run, winning eight times and going back-to-back -back for USAC stock car titles. Paul would again run the 1962 Indy 500 and finish 26th due to a mechanical issue. Paul would only run one more 500 after 62, getting 18th in 1963. Around this time, Paul pivoted back to stock cars, double dipping in the USAC stock car division and returning to NASCAR. He focused on NASCAR solely in 1964, before jumping back to USAC in 1965 during the controversial Hemi season. During that year, Paul nearly won the 1965 USAC Stock Championship, and in 1966, Paul returned to NASCAR in force. He won three times, including a Daytona Duel, a 500-mile race at Rockingham, and his last career victory at the Fall Bristol Race. He was driving for Ray Nichols, and during Paul's second stint in NASCAR, he instituted something that is common practice to this day, flying the races. Paul's second passion in the racing was being an air pilot. He became one of the first to fly to racetracks on his own, and set a standard that slowly grew over time. And nearing the end of the 60s, approaching the age of 43 years old, Paul decided that he had had enough and retired. He moved back to northern Indiana and began building an aviation business. Over the second half of the 20th century, Paul also acquired various Burger King restaurants across the Midwest and built two racehorse ranches in Florida. Mr. Goldsmith has also become a distinguished member of the Michigan Racing Hall of Fame, the Motorsports Hall of Fame, the IMS Hall of Fame, the USAC Hall of Fame, and the AMA Hall of Fame. Paul, to the making of this video, is still working like he has every other day of his life. He reportedly still flies at 97 years old, and is our last connection to the true golden age of American auto racing. There will never be a man quite like Paul Goldsmith ever again. A true living legend.